Welcome. Today I'm just going to be talking about some molds that I've been working on and some tools to help with those molds. So first up I have this very simple mold press that I've made and this is just to help get uh, with your cap molds to make sure that they have an even flush and securely put on cap. So just to give you an idea Here's a really exaggerated example of if you have a cap mold and you don't have your cap down all the way flat, you get a raised surface and that's not what you want. A lot of times depending on the cap mold that you have, you might put it in there and the resin might just push it up and you might have to like push down, squish it out and stuff. Anyway, just to make that easier, um, I have this press to where you can put your mold in there and then you can put a plate on it. And I have two different kinds, just a normal one or one with slots if you happen to have uh, sprues at the top that you need the resin to go through the top of. And then just some wing nuts. And then use the wing nuts to just, just not necessarily tighten it enough to squish it because we don't want to squish or deform our mold, but just to hold it in place so that it's perfectly flat and the seams have no gaps in them snug but not squishing it. See I can still squish underneath it but I don't want it to be squished. I want it to just be snug holding that so there's no gaps or seams anywhere. And while I was doing that I was experimenting with again different kinds of molds and the first one, this is actually the second iteration, but the first one I was doing, I had the raised faces, but then I just had these little tracks that I had talked about earlier, and they were actually the same height, and they would just go out the sides. And then when I make the cap, I would just cut the track part out when I went to make the cap so that it would have that empty track so that then when you put your cap mold down and you press on it instead of it just going everywhere out the sides it would just go through the tracks and hopefully stay in the tracks when I did just the straight it mostly just went out and those would always have voids in them right there where the tracks went so then I decided to make them uh, angle upward so that then it would have a little pocket that the excess resin could sit in and go back down into if if it needed to, which is what this one was. And then you can see, so once I made the lids, I would then just cut the tracks off so that you have your empty tracks for the resin to fill into. But that didn't really work either. I always, out of the three times that I tried it, had voids right where it meets the actual die. There would be a little pool of resin on the side and then a void right there. So I abandoned that but if you do want to try that I do have those available on my drive now for those that are subscribed to that. So you can play with those if you want to. I've gone back to just doing the bevels but without any tracks or anything and then just doing it that way. The only difference with this one versus what I was doing before, what I was doing before was I would try and have this shape be just inside the face so that on mine where I don't do the sharp edged and I have these flat edged edges, I don't know how else to say that, instead of it being just a sharp corner it's a beveled edge there, so it would just be on the face, but then it would be this weird, if it did stick up in the middle of the face, with the bottom of the face down, so when you went to shave that off, a lot of times if it got really bad, it would be so deep that it would take the whole number off, or you'd have to fill it in with resin on the sides. So what I've been doing now is using this, but bigger, so that it's the same size as my face, of my die. Um, that way I have so that it's thicker and less likely to rip. 
but also leaving it large so it's easier to get stuff in there if I want to put in inclusions or things like that in the dice. So I would say at this point from all the different molds and styles that I've done, cap molds, I would either do this and then you can either just leave it uh, a straight cap um, that just smushes out the sides or you can, what I did was I used putty and I put parts of toothpicks in there to make just little holes so that then the resin could go up which is why I would have this style just have to angle it in there so that the holes are, are visible uh, to get the resin through it. I don't know that the sprues with or without at least with this style that I've been doing has made any difference so I've just been doing it without the sprues just because it's faster or where I would just take the strip of tape and put the dice directly on the tape and just have the the cap be just perfectly flush rather than having any indentions or anything like that. Downside to that would be that the edges of the mold are a lot thinner and more likely to rip. So with the press, now for example this is the old style where I went to do just straight down without having a bevel. Uh, the downside to that is once you try and get it in it kind of pops right back up. Right? It's hard to get it to stay in there unless you really get it in there. Once it's in there it's usually in, in pretty well but that's hard to do so another good thing to be able to use the press for to just kind of hold it and keep it secured on there. I put some tape around the outsides and then I just used some excess uh, silicone that I was using for molds and I would use that on the bottom and one of the sides of the lids so that that way when you use it to actually press your mold it's easier to get the silicone off of it. You could just use like a mold release if you didn't want to do that just spray it with mold release on both sides. That's what I've been doing with this one. It's just been spraying mold release on it. Haven't had any silicone. It would be hard to do with having the holes in it and things so spraying it with mold release worked better. The other thing that's a new tool that's available I got a new pressure pot that's a bigger five gallon pot that uses much larger trays now. So I have a new creation of trays. If, if you want to use this, you can also scale it down, but this is a 12 inch round. It's two different files. There's the top, which has the handle, and it has on the bottom some threads. And then the second part is as many tiers as you want and it just has uh, support pillars which I made taller so that I can fit my mold presses in between there and it also has uh, threads on the top to thread on to either another layer because there's threads at the bottom of this just like on the lid or put your top on there. and then you can just put together as many tiers as you want. I've only used two, but I do have four printed. And the same thing to make it easier for you. So anytime you're making molds, if you have extra silicone, this is a good way to, to use it. I just put tape around the outside edges and then just do a flat pour of my silicone so that then when I do my resin, the resin bits can just easily come right off. And I'll use these trays not only to put my molds on, but I'll also mix my resin and basically use it like a mat. So those files are available. If you're a subscriber on my Patreon or on my Coffee, or I call it Ko-Fi because I say I say Wi-Fi, I don't say Wi-Fi. Those are available if you want to print those. Again, if you have a pot that doesn't quite take 12 inch, um, you can maybe scale these down. I would just, if you want to be able to use the molds, just make sure you're scaling X and Y, don't scale the Z. And just make sure that you scale it exactly the same for both pieces so that they actually fit together. But that's what I've been doing. Um, I've also been testing with, and I will be making another video for it, because someone also asked about 
how I made these test dice. These test dice are shell dice, so on the inside I did just a blank that I then painted on, and then I took that and I put it inside of another mold. But for now, that's what I've been working on, and hopefully some of these tools will come in handy for you. I tried to make the threads tall enough that I could use them with uh, any size of mold because my molds vary in heights and sizes. This one's a little bit too big because it's the one that I put extra stuff in the top. But for the most part, most of my molds will fit in there and be able to be used with the lids. That's something that you can play with on your own and see if that's something that will work with your dice making. Thanks for watching and hopefully this video has been helpful to you. Hopefully these are some tools that maybe you'd be able to use in your own dice making at home. And until next time, have fun making some new molds and using your press on your squish molds. Cap molds. Squishing your caps. <laughs>